This is my impression of a documentary. What is Total Distortion? Originally slated for 1993, but released in 1995, think about all the weirdness you remember about the birth of the MTV era, or if you're like me, who was alive but hardly sentient at the time, what you've seen on old VHS tapes that your dad used to record late at night, or even on YouTube. It's the late 80s, early 90s music video scene that's driving this one, and it is driving it pretty hard. Its lore also runs deep, so let's run over it quickly. Basically, your character is a music video producer who lives inside a quote-unquote personal media tower. But wait, it's not on Earth. No, that would be far too normal. It is in another dimension called the Distortion Dimension. So according to the game, six years before your character arrives in the Distortion Dimension, alien artifacts were found on Earth. And these artifacts proved to be um, devices that could transport an item anywhere, any place, in an instant. This teleportation technology required lots of power to move larger objects, and humans had to use special coma tanks for, you know, six weeks at a time to survive. It's a weird game. So the government learned that instead of using this technology to be able to find other planets and aliens, they found alternate dimensions where certain pop cultures flourish, from cartoons to comics, you know, all the way to musical genres, anything a youth could dream up. Yes, this is a very weird game. Long story longer, your character's distant uncle dies and leaves you a bunch of money. You make this weird video tower and then f*** off to the distortion dimension to make music videos. The music videos you make have to be sold to music video TV show hosts still on Earth, regular Earth, and you need to earn, you know, either 700 grand or whatever, you know, the amount of fame is that you need to win the game, or both, for you to be able to get back home. Uh, the, the real story here is, though, you go to this place to make wicked music videos and then you realize everyone there is a freak and that you need to get back home eventually. So now what? Well, that's a good question. Totally on brand for games from that era, there's nothing really to tell you what to do at first. I assume the manual might have done some of that as developers actually did a pretty good job of helping players get the game actually running and open, at least with the Mac install instructions. You know, if we look at how files were labeled on the 6500, but one beef that I have with the adventure game era, um, the game designers seem to really get off to make things hard to do. A lot of these old games leave people sitting there scratching their heads, just trying to figure out what the next move that they should make is, you know, or how to even say it properly so the game will execute it. Granted, this isn't a text adventure game, so you don't have that difficulty, but you do die a lot. Like, if you make a mistake, it's just it. That's it. Like, it's very unforgiving. My brother and I, being the experienced gamers that we are, figured we could easily deal with this in a night, you know, and at least get a short run through done. And our first obstacle ended up trying to get a screen recording device hooked up to the Power Mac 6500. This resulted in us making a trip down to Memory Express, located in Canada. Memory Express, it's great for getting stuff. Anyway, we got the part we needed, which didn't work in the end anyway, and it was minus 45 Celsius, and we just had a fresh snowfall, so what a sweet trip that was. Anyway, we set things up as best we could and dove right in, thinking we were just going to skate through this game. I was so inspired by checking out that demo that I went on eBay and I bought a full copy of the game Total Distortion. Yes, uh, it looks fully insane. There's even an insane man on the, the disc itself. We even set the difficulty up to 4 out of 5, and in an old game, increasing the difficulty doesn't always mean that there's just more bad guys with more health, you know? Sometimes it means that things are less obvious and more mysterious. My brother and I died to this guitar warrior over and over until realizing our guitar is a weapon, and it plays notes that correspond in color with the notes that the warrior plays. We then have to hit those notes to block the notes that he's playing, and then we have to play them again so that we can send them right back and damage him instead. And if we had chosen difficulty one, we would have had color-coded notes on the neck of the guitar and it would have been at least a little more obvious what it is we were supposed to do with it. Anyway, Stace and I spent the night not loving it and then we called it. I chose to spend the rest of the evening reading through a walkthrough because I thought, you know, there's got to be a way. This game's hard, but there's got to be a way we can do this in a reasonable amount of time. You know, I work, I have this YouTube channel, there's a lot of stuff going on, I can't be spending nights trying to figure this thing out. I went into it the next day, feeling ready, and failed miserably. I have one health? This game. The 
worst part about some of the deaths is you don't even know what's hurting you or why you can't do certain things. If you save over your file in a zone where you're basically having a hard time getting out, you're just screwed. So this sent me back to the internet in favor of another walkthrough, one that felt a bit more thorough. Also hopped on YouTube and found some playthroughs, found a great series by a YouTuber named Vine Sauce or Full Jill Streams, or he also seemed to be called like Varg Skeletor or Skeletor Full Jill Streams, either way. Brimming with confidence, I sit back out one final time to try and get further in this ridiculous adventure game because I find it so enthralling. You know, I'm complaining about it, but I found it it lived in my head for weeks. Like there was just something about the aesthetic and, and the weirdness uh, that I just couldn't get over. I listened to the walkthroughs. I read the bios about the VJs to learn where they're from, what they like to see in a video, that kind of thing. Went back to the video editor, put something together, made an offer to Stevie and she liked it. So how much money did I get for that video? Remember, I need 700,000 to win the game. Thanks. I'll get back to you after I've taken a look at it. I'll take that video, but I'm not sure it's hit material. Ooh. <laughs> All four options are okay. What's your offer? Here's my offer. Thirty-six hundred dollars. Yeah, thirty-six hundred bucks. This is gonna take a long time. A lot of trial and error using that music video editor. But I'm not sure it's hit material. Anyway, going back to the walkthrough, I found out I shouldn't leave the tower until I'd earned 50 grand. And to be honest, in 2022, I don't feel like spending all the time trial and erroring these music videos. Hello, this is Stevie. Hello. That I went back to the Vine Sauce walkthrough, and when I was wondering if there was even a reason to live, I hit up the comments and I found this. This is one of the original game developers, Joe Sparks, who I believe is this guy. And he's chatting about the game. Well, let's click on his channel, shall we? See what Mr. Sparks is up to. Oh, it turns out Joe has lots of content on there, including some live streams where he discusses total distortion. He's big into music, surprise. And uh, also Elvis, it seems. And I'm not just saying that because of the sideburns. So the first thought that I had when I came across Joe's channel is when I found the demo disc for this, I, I remember saying, these guys look like they were a lot of fun to work with. These guys look like they would have been a lot of fun to work with. And going through the videos on Joe's channel, watching his live streams and his Q and A's and stuff, I totally got the same sense. Uh, but according to Joe, unfortunately they had to wind the company down within a year of uh, Total Distortion releasing. Um, and Joe was saying that if they had stopped trying to do more CD-ROM games at that point, it was about 1996, if I remember the details correctly, and if they'd gone all in on the web, that Pop Rocket might still be around today. So I'm sorry to hear that that happened, because frankly it was such an interesting game and had so much character. Like, this game is brimming with character. But you know what was more interesting? Do you remember the weird music videos that we made in Total Distortion? The ones that had people dancing and sliding in and out of frame? Joe is still making these music videos, but in real life. Check out some of these beauties. So I'm not joking when I say this. These videos are an ancient art form revived. 90s music videos were a whole beast of their own and nothing at all like what we see today. The fact Joe Sparks is still out there putting together these strange masterpieces is almost entirely considered art now. So here's the real truth about Total Distortion. It's a fascinating game with a ton of hidden Easter eggs, so much character. Uh, when you click on a button, sometimes a game disses you, you know, like there's just, every corner has fun, interactive, creative, clickable elements. If the year was 1996, right now, I'd probably be glued to this game and try to figure out everything. The 50 different in-game books, the tower defense sleeping game, there's a ton of reasons to play and enjoy Total Distortion. Am I glad I found it? Yes. Did I get through it? Not even close. Did I find it frustrating? Incredibly. Do I think about it daily? Somehow, yes. Somehow this game wormed its way into my brain and every day since playing that demo disc, I think, I could beat this. Thought you were hot. Guess what? You're not. Hey, I got a little bit of fame, and we made $1,500. Yeah. 